Good evening and welcome to the Longmont Museum. It's great to see all of you. My name is Jim Fladmark and I'm the Special Events and Rentals Coordinator here at the Longmont Museum. And we have a great uh, evening for you here tonight. So before uh, we start, I wanted to uh, mention a few things. Uh, we have the Teepee to Tiny House exhibit here that opened a few weeks ago. And Stephen LaPointe, who's, uh, who I'll introduce in a few moments, he helped us a lot with all of the teepees and getting us educated about all of that. So he did a lot of uh, help to the museum just to be authentic about our presentation of the Teepee to Tiny House exhibit. So uh, the thank yous I want to express are to the Scientific and Cultural Facility District, to the Stewart Family Foundation, to Philip Ferrante and the Com Longmont Community Foundation, to the Friends of the Longmont Museum, and to all the museum donors and members. Do we have any museum members here tonight? Great. As Justin says, we can't do what we do without you, so thank you. I also wanted just to ask, is there anyone who has never been to a powwow before? Okay, there's a few of you. Okay, well, enjoy. So before we begin, I wanted to read uh, the land acknowledgement statement. And before I read the statement, I'll just read a few comments. This was approved by the Longmont City Council uh, on July 13th, 2021. A land acknowledgement is a formal statement that recognizes and respects indigenous peoples and traditional stewards of this land and the enduring relationship that exists between indigenous peoples and their traditional territories. For non-indigenous communities, land acknowledgement is a powerful way of showing respect and honoring the indigenous peoples of the land on which we work and live. Acknowledgement is a simple way of resisting the erasure of indigenous histories and working towards honoring and inviting truth. So the land acknowledgement that was uh, approved by the Longmont City Council reads, it, it comes up on my phone. We acknowledge that Longmont sits on the traditional territory of the Cheyenne, Arapaho, Ute, the Lakota and other indigenous peoples. We honor the history and the living and spiritual connection that the first peoples have had with this land. It is our commitment to face the injustices that happened when the land was taken and to educate our communities, ourselves, and our children to ensure that these injustices do not happen again adopted by the Longmont City Council on July 13, 2021. So with that, I'd like to welcome Stephen LaPont and Big Eagle and the Colorado Crew. Welcome. All right, everyone. Thank you all for coming and coming out to support us here. So we've combined drum groups today. We have Big Eagle and Colorado Crew. We also have our dance troupe here. We're the Mahai Powwow Experience. Many of us worked at many powwows all across Indian country. We've, do po we've done powwows all across the metro area here. I run several. Just kind of let you know what a powwow is. It is a reflection of our ancient ways. The official powwow was given to us by the Omaha Nation. 
They have a, they have a dance just like this. They gave to all of our nations. So as we entered the reservation period, we weren't allowed our First Amendment rights. We weren't allowed citizenship, even though they promised us we would. My great-great-grandfather went to World War I, a non-citizen, came back a non-citizen. It wasn't until 1924 he was allowed to vote. My great-grandfather was a Lakota code talker, one of 11 on our reservation. His language was never cracked by the Germans or the Japanese. 32 other tribes amongst us were also code talkers. I always want to acknowledge our ancestral warriors, our veterans. 20% of the United States military is Native American because we, this is our country too. And what you see here is an amalgamation of our Denver Metro and Front Range folks here. Many of us came here on relocation. Many of us came on our own after military service. We are your neighbors, your community members, your coworkers. So to destigmatize some of these things, we come out here and do these community outreaches just like this. And with that, we're going to do our grand entry. Then we're going to do our flag and victory song. The flag song is equivalent to the national anthem. And our victory song commemorates a time we come home victoriously, whether we come home alive or in a box, we still come home. One of my family members, one of my uncles is on the wall of Vietnam. When we sing these victory songs, it's for them who never made it home. My other grandfathers who came home with war scars, mentally and physically, we honor them when we sing these victory songs. So with that, we're going to do what's called a grand entry, where we line up at a big powwow. We'll have hundreds of dancers, even thousands. But for you here, we get an intimate powwow experience. I'm going to go through each powwow dance, the history and the stories. And then we're going to go on to our flute player. Then we're going to do some different types of dances, and we'll conclude. But thank you for your time and allowing us to come here and share this with you all. Thank you very much. So with that, we're going to line up for our grand entry. We're going to go to our drum group here, which is Big Eagle and Colorado Crew combined. So whenever ready, boys, grand entry time. Mike man, turn me up and turn me on. <laughs> so that is an example of our grand entry. 
At this time, I'm going to ask that we all rise as we go into our flag song and honor our servicemen and women abroad, taking those lonely posts, getting ready for the battle in Europe, not knowing when they're coming home. We're going to do the flag song in our language, and we're going to sing a victory song to commemorate those who never came home. So big ego, whenever you're ready, boys, flag and victory. Now for the victory song.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, how about that? Our flag and victory song. Now, traditionally, after that portion of the powwow, we introduce our color guard. Obviously, we didn't bring our color guard today. <laughs> and then we go into a round of inner tribals normally. That's how I run mine. That way, we all could enjoy our drum here. A little bit about our drum. In our language, it's called chanchega, which means a wooden bowl. You guys can all seat. Take your seat. <laughs> But this drum is the heartbeat of our nation. That means we treat it with respect like a, like a member of our family. So to be a drum keeper, you have to treat one really good. You have to be respectful of your drum, store it properly. Our lead singer here, he takes his drum to ceremony. And that is one of the reasons why I ask that there be no alcohol today. So thank you for respecting that. We try to live that sober life when we have the ceremony ways. And as you know, a lot of our men and women were veterans. So before there was PTSD, a lot of our men and women turned to alcohol in defense of this country. So that is a misconception I wanted to clear up. A lot of them seen action. They turned to that bottle. And that's why we ask that's not here. So thank you all. And as we go into, uh, thank you, yeah. As we go and we're gonna highlight each dance. So at this time, I'm gonna ask our, uh, our women's traditional dancer to come on out here. <laughs> uh, Tara here, Tara Gover. She's a veteran herself. She's also a technology graduate and she works for a big firm. And she does really well. Yeah. <laughs> Let's give her a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. She's from the Oto, Missouri Nation, and she's also Kikpu. And she's a very awesome seamstress, and she knows her ways. So the women's Southern traditional is very elegant and beautiful. So you're going to witness that today as she dances. So that's a little bit of highlight. So this is the most traditional style we get in our powwow ways. So as we sing this song for her, two push-ups or four? Two push. <laughs> so our women's traditional, they're judged at powwows if it's a contest powwow. Just like a rodeo, your outfit has to be made a certain way, accordance with your tribe. Your feathers have to be on a certain way. The way you dance, the way you stop with the drum, it's a contest between you and the drum. So with that, we're gonna go to our, our uh, drum here. I almost said our host drum. <laughs> uh, Big Eagle, Colorado Crew, whenever you're ready, our women's traditional Southern style.
right, let's give a round of applause to Tara Gover. So if you noticed her fringe of her shawl, that is also judged on how her shawl fringe is moved. So it's those little intricacies in our traditional ways that are judged. So at this time, I'm going to ask our um, men's southern straight dancer. So as you see, I'm a northern traditional dancer. We're going to do a little comparison. So in the Oklahoma way, um, the men's southern does not have a bustle like I am wearing. They weren't allowed to do that. The Indian agents in the army did not want them wearing eagle feathers, which is a symbol of our ultimate spirituality. So they had to evolve and do a different style. They call this the gentleman's style. And again, you'll notice the intricacies of that tradition. So when we bring these to you, oftentimes people want to see the fancy dancers. There's not many of them left anymore, especially after COVID. We had a lot pass away, a lot not wanting to do it anymore. So what we're bringing back is our traditional style. And in our men's traditional way, his garb is out of a warrior. If you see the trailer on his back, that wipes away. The enemy sh will track you. Back in the day, those used to be longer, and they'd wipe your tracks away, just like mines do here. He wears his garters and bells differently as well, as well as leggings. Now, in Oklahoma, this is really hot for him to wear. So they have to powwow at night. And Tara's also from Oklahoma, so that's how they do things there. It's a different style. Our drum group is a northern style. It, that is true. So a lot of the ceremony dances come in the daytime before we start powwow. So the powwow was brought upon during the Wild West shows. So you see uh, Buffalo Bill hired a lot of Indians to go across the world and bring our dances. That's how Pawa has evolved, to show our ever-changing art, culture, to everyone. So this is a representation of traditional garb done in a modern way, such as myself. And we're going to do uh, the gentleman's dance here, the southern straight. So this is a straight song. We'll do some other dances uh, later, but I wanted to highlight the southern style. So big eagle whenever you're ready. Now, ladies and gentlemen, was the Oklahoma Southern style gentleman's dance. Phil's also a graduate of Stanford in law. He's a lawyer, used to be, and now he's the director of Adams 12 Indian Education. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> so uh, now we're going to go into my portion here. This is a men's northern traditional style. As you see, when we did the grand entry, 
I was making gestures to clear the arena of any bad energy, bringing blessings of my eagles to this ground here. That's how we do it. So with that, you're going to see almost like an art style dance. I'm going to tell a story when I do this. Now, I'm a little bit older and out of shape, so I can't do 10 push-ups like I used to, but we're going to do two push-ups in the, the northern style for myself here. You're going to see the difference between the northern and southern. And then after this, um, I'll explain what that song meant to me. And uh, there's a story that I, held, oh, I hold to myself, and I'll show and I'll share with you guys. So with that, whenever you're ready, Big Eagle. And as you can tell, that is an art style dance. So I was telling a story, a little bit about my background. I was a first responder for a long time. I've been in two mass shootings and nine other smaller ones. But I did that out of love for my community, for all of us here. And so I was dodging bullets. <laughs> in honor of uh, my brothers and sisters who wear that badge, that shield, in any capacity. So I want to thank all of our first responders, firefighters, EMTs. So at this time, we're going to go into our one of our, our more contemporary styles, which is our ladies' fancy. So. So this style came about after World War II and World War I, and it evolved. Our young ladies used to do nothing but traditional dance. When they went into mourning, it was like going into a cocoon until one young lady had a vision to wrap that shawl around her arm, around her body, and emulate the butterfly. So that's how the start and the story, one of them, created the women's fancy shawl dance. So they started competing with the men fancy dancers, and it evolved into what you see today. They're going to notice a lot more fancier footwork. They're also going to tell their own story. It won't be as intricate, but it's going to be amazing. So when you see them, you'll know they're fancy dancers. So we're going to go to Big Eagle and Colorado Crew. Whenever you're ready, boys, the fancy shawl ladies.
How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Our ladies' fancy shawl. So at this time, I'm going to introduce our men's grass dance. So our men grass dance come from a long line of grass dancers. In order to be a grass dancer, you had to be accepted into a warrior society. So a little bit about our headdresses here. As you see, all of us have that. We have to have a ceremony in order to wear these. These are made of porcupine guard hair. So to wear your armor is a form of protection because a porcupine is dangerous to try to mess with, right? So this guards our head. Now back in the day, we used to have different styles. Some of those are relevant throughout Powell country today. But we have two feathers, or we have two sets of plumes here. Those are our brothers, they'll dance with us. So back in the day, our grass dances were our scouts. And all of you who are in the military know who calf scouts were. These gentlemen sought out the enemy, looked for track. In ceremony, we'd ask them to find suitable trees for Sundance. They'd also stomp down the grass for us before we set up our homes, our tipishtala. Tipis were our homes back then. Our grass dancers would come. Traditionally, they'd wear deer toes to scare all the snakes out. Stomp down the grass and bless, just like I did in our grand entry, to clear out bad energy, because we're setting up our home there. So these men, descendants, of Chief Big Eagle, Chief Hawk, and Chief Sitting Bull. They're going to come do this grass dance. Now, the start of this dance came about four or 500 years ago. One of our men was born deformed, and he couldn't dance like the regular men. The vision he was given was he has to dance a certain way, almost like he's falling. That's how the grass dance originated. And what you see today is the modern artistic version of that. So these guys are also our singers and ceremony dancers. So I'm going to join the drum. And I want you guys to, do you guys want four? Four push-ups? All right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to give you guys four push-ups. All right, hold on. So at this time, I'm going to join our drum real quick. And we're going to give you guys the grass stunts.
Let's give our grass dancers a round of applause for that beautiful dance. So at this time, we're going to be calling upon our flute player here, Mr. Calvin Standing Bear. It comes from a chief line, Chief Standing Bear. His artwork can be seen at the Denver Art Museum. His father was a Vietnam veteran who served with my uncles. Calvin here is going to do an opening song, a prayer song, and we're going to back him up on that. So a little bit of history on our prayer songs. We weren't allowed to sing them until 1978 is when we got our First Amendment rights. Our men and women came back home from Vietnam and pressed for our rights, for our First Amendments to be heard. The prayer song you're going to hear comes from our family of the Sichangu Lakota Oyate. Sung in that fashion, this is a real sacred song. Then he's going to start by playing the flute and telling you the stories of these different songs here. So at this time, let's give a round of applause to Calvin Standing Bear. Hello, relatives. Calvin Standing Bear Jr. here. Come from two nations, Lakota and Navajo. I am an upcoming flutist here in Colorado. And um, actually, I started off singing traditional songs, ceremonial songs at a young age, probably maybe seven years old. Uh, started off going into ceremony. And then uh, gradually went into s social dance songs, which you hear today, powwow singing, all taught by my, uh, my father, Calvin Standing Bear Sr., and my uh, grandmother, my late grandmother, Neva Standing Bear. So I want to share, share a prayer song with you guys because, uh, you know, I, I feel like uh, the Native American flu has a lot more to offer than um, relaxing and stuff like that the way I was taught so it's kind of more of um, from our people it it did come for court courting and stuff like that and marriage and stuff like that and but it also also has a emotional emotional standard so long time ago when these people were went through heartache or maybe a heartbreak or they lost somebody some sort like that or they missed somebody you know this flute was brought to our people here you know with the sacrifice from the from the tree people we got our songs from the birds and all these other elements that we we get to play with so so I'll, I'd like to sing this healing song first following that so talk <sighs> Hey, ho, yeah, 
This song I'm about to perform now is part of a healing song I made for my uh, relatives that passed, passed along. So my brother, he just recently passed this past winter. And then my grandmother, my, my niece, all my relatives. But I didn't make it for myself. I made it for the people too. So we could all get some kind of healing. I know we lost some people, so I'd like to perform this. So this other song I'm about to perform is uh, called uh, Prairie Nights. I got this song of a nice ride through um, my home up in South Dakota. So it's real beautiful up there. And uh, the song came to mind, seeing some of the evening birds. So I wanted to share this song with you guys, Prairie Nights. Thank you. 
So one of these stories I know about this flute is that um, it did come from a woodpecker, from our people. So we pass these stories down orally, you know, generation, generation. You know, we have, we've had our own instruments here in this continent for a long time. And um, I believe there's many, many more instruments out there too. And I, I believe they'll find them. Oh, nice. <laughs> Got a bird in the audience up there too. So, so one of the story about this woodpecker would be um, this guy. He was um, really trying to court this young female of his age, and it just really wasn't happening with his um, with her father. So he's a, you know trying hard every day, trying to show his heart, willingness, what he can do, what he can offer, kind of similar today, and um, the father wasn't really having it, so he uh, really became heartbroken, so he started walking the prairie late at night and uh, stumbled upon a tree, kind of fell, fell asleep listening to this bird playing its tune, and it was, you know, it was a real beautiful song from coming from this bird, and, you know, kind of put him to sleep, so the, and through the middle of the night, this bird was trying to get his attention, you know, knocking wood chips off this branch and everything, so but he kind of slept through it. Next morning, he still, you know, heard this song being played several other songs and it's kind of making him feel better so he started to feel a little better in his spirit and his heart and his mind and then this bird start to show revealing this piece of branch that start to resemble a flute the size of a flute maybe two three feet kind of broke off start woodpecking this this flute out and everything like that and then a long time ago our people we used to communicate with the animals and other beings on this earth before any of this modernization or our language is changing and that's one spiritual thing that we have as a my people so this bird taught him how to do the rest of the flute, carve it out, what holes to put on there, kind of tune it up a little bit, and then start teaching him these songs. And then as, as he's got this flute made well, well made, and start learning these beautiful songs, this bird taught him, you know, some of these courting songs. So he started to play some of these courting songs at night outside the camp or outside his uh, beloved uh, future wife. So he would be playing these songs at night and she'd be hearing them and she was wondering where all this music, beautiful music was coming from. So one night she was hearing his music again and uh, followed that that beautiful tune, and here was him. She came down here by the creek. He was playing by the creek with the beautiful elements, too. There was birds there, too, and watching over him. And uh, she just fell right in love with him, fell in love with the song. She wanted to know who was playing with it. And, you know, that, that song, that music just touched her heart because she was sad, too, because her... Her father didn't accept this man, so. So they became one at the end of the story. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. So this is one of the stories. And it both deals, you know, an emotional process, uh, you know, love and healing and everything like that, so.
Yeah, I'd like to perform one more song for you guys. This song here, I made with my father. He, um, actually, my father, Calvin Stanbeer Sr., he's a, he's a national recording artist. And um, he taught me pretty much everything I know about music. The flu, the singing, you know, especially re really learning music down to keys and playing with other instruments. And I composed this song with my father. I want to you know, give a shout out to my father. He really taught me a lot of traditional values of my people. My grandmother, Neva, I want to give a shout out to her. She really, she really put a lot of um, teachings into our community. My father too, he was a, um, teach the community spiritual songs. So before he taught um, social dance songs, so, and, um, me and my dad, we sat down one evening. And we just kind of just playing by ear, listening to our keys and stuff like that. And my dad got down on the guitar and he's like, hey, play this song. And let's see what you got, you know. And so we kind of start fooling around with uh, those two instruments here. And just kind of came out and did something. So this, this song's real special to me. It makes me think of my father a lot, so.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Calvin Standing Bear. Let's give him one more round of applause. <clears throat> we have one or two more songs we're going to do before we conclude this evening. A little bit about his father. You could support him and his CD. I believe it's on iTunes, Calvin iTunes, so look for Calvin Standing Bear Sr. If you want to support members of our other family, look at the book by Ernest LaPointe, Sitting Bull and His Story. Come to our powwows. So at this time, we're going to be going into a little bit of a, a special song here called a Crow Hop. We're gonna call out our ladies, fancy dancers. I'm gonna dance with them. David, you gonna dance? All right, and Robert Hawk. So a little bit about Desmond Eagle here. He's the relative of, descendant of Chief Big Eagle. He's also the director of the Haseo Men's Program in Colorado Springs. I myself currently work with Denver Public Schools Indian Education and the Denver Indian Center Fatherhood Bro Group. We have Marcus Cyrus here, one of our gentlemen at the drum. His mother started the first women's color guard in powwow country. He is descendant of Chief Big Man. We have Andrew Harold here, he's from Pine Ridge. We also have Greg Shortman, the lead singer of his own group called Colorado Crew. So that's a little bit of introduction for all of us here. So at this time, we're going to go into a crow hop. I'm going to join you guys. Hold on. Get on some flat ground, guys. <laughs> All right. We slipping over here. All right, at this time, we're going to go on to this dance called the crow hop. So whenever we're ready, boys, take it away. All right, at this time, we're going to do what's called a round dance. This dance comes from our neighbors from Canada. They brought the round dance to America when we used to trade with them. So we're going to dance in a circle here. 
This comes from a long line of ceremony dances from the Cree people, First Nations Aboriginals, our brothers and sisters to the north. Now, when our great grandfather came back from war with the First Nations men who trained here in Camp Hale, the 10th Mountain Division, they had one of the most decorated soldiers in Canada it was a First Nations Aborigine. He brought that round dance to Colorado to the native soldiers here. And we uphold that. But at this time, as we do this round dance, you guys could come join us in honor of our men and women and our families here. And I always have to mention, I've seen it around as an educator myself. There are three different tribes who are still yet unconquered. The Seminoles in Florida, the Meskwakis in Iowa, and the Dakota warriors who stood in Canada that were from Chief Sitting Bull's band in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. So in honor of them, we bring to you the round dance. So if any of you want to come up and join us, you're more than welcome to. So if you're feeling the drum, sound man, if you could kick them up a little bit, we'll start the round dance. Make a couple lines, come on in. There you go. Don't be afraid. Come and enjoy the spirit.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, give yourselves a round of applause. With that, I'm going to call our dancers up here one last time. I want to thank Phil Gover for bringing his family along. Let's give Phil one more last round of applause. <laughs> Tara Gover, let's give her a round of applause for coming on down and helping us out. Her daughter, Delilah. Delilah Gover, our fancy dancer. Our other young lady who joined us is also a fancy dancer from near this community. She's also a champion fancy dancer. Give him a wave. She came to join us today. I want to thank our grass dancers, David LaPointe, Desmond Eagle, and Robert Hawk. And our singers, Calvin Standing Bear, our flute player, lead singer. Marcus Cyrus. Greg Shortman, and Andrew Harold from the Colorado Crew drum group and with that ladies and gentlemen concludes our mile high powwow experience i wish you all the best to continue your journey we are also your neighbors we're also your teachers so we're here for you guys anytime and with that we never say goodbye in our language we say till we see you again so from my heart to all of you we say dok sha ake till I see you again. Drive home safe, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you very, very much. Steve Point, Big Eagle and Colorado crew.